The one thing that I will say about this is Leader of Men was removed from the campaign pool. Uh, I was I was notified from a YouTube comment that Leader of Men, because the Theodred who was who Leader of Men was attached to, was defeated. Leader of Men is no longer in the campaign pool because it's a permanent attachment. And so I'm not replaying last scenario. I'm I'm done with that one for a while, at least until the two handed plays come back. And so we're just gonna not use Leader of Men this time through. So excellent. So we got. Shalab's Lair. You're playing campaign mode. Attach a heavy burden to the ring bearer. Remove each burden with the following, etc., etc. A heavy burden. Permanent. Attached to the ring bearer. At the end of the planning phase, either raise each player's threat by one or exhaust the ring bearer. We have Frodo Baggins. And I chose this Frodo. I'm hoping that this one works a little bit better, especially with how many attacks. Actually, you know what? No, I take that back. We don't need this. Um, because we have Baragod. Um, and I think we're going to have enough defense there. So we get to choose from any of these Frodo's. I'm thinking that. Let's just go with the. We're going to spend a resource and uh, exhaust the wandering to cancel the effects of an encounter card. I think I think that one that one can just be super, super solid, depending on, you know, what we're what we're up against. And then it doesn't require needing a test will as bad. We got the stairs. Uh, Smeagol has led Frodo and Sam to the Morgul Vale, where he promises to show them a secret way over the mountains of shadow and into the land of Mordor. I should watch. I need to rewatch. I love Lord of the Rings so much. Uh, but Sam fears that Gollum may be leading them into the trap. Set cleft of Cherith Ungol, Shalab, and the Great Spider encounter set aside out of play. Those are over there. Push Smeagol into play under the first player's control. Uh, make Morgul Vale the active location and add Schmeagle's secret way to the staging area, shuffle the encounter deck. Progress cannot be placed on underground locations. I think that this is kind of here so that we don't stall on this first quest. I, I have not played this, but I did look through and kind of strategized a little bit on how I was going to approach the quest. And it seems like you know, it'd be kind of nice to just sit here because there's a lot of threats coming out when we do progress past 1B. And I think, you know, if we flood ourselves with underground location, there is a there is a built-in timer with those underground locations that we're going to have to take care of because we cannot place progress on them and we can just, like, lock ourselves out of a win. So after uh, Smeagol's secret way is explored, discard three random cards from each player's hand to discard each Nazgul enemy in the staging area. So there's a lot of discards in this scenario, which is excellent because we are running an Elven Light deck where we want to be discarding those cards. Now, this is random, so we'll see. Uh, at the end of the quest phase, if Smeagol's secret way is in the victory display, advance to 2A. So we don't have any progress. We just have to ooh, push through Smeagol's secret way. The Morg Vale is our active location. It is immune to player card effects. It has two quest points. After it is explored, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Morgul Wraith and add it to the staging area. The Wraith is a 45 threat, 4549, cannot have Morgul attachments, and when the One Ring is exhausted, the Morgul Wraith gets minus 30 engagement costs and gains immune to player cards effects. Woo! Arkham Horror is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So that's going to come out, but we can discard three random cards when we explore the secret way here to get rid of it. So that's probably a good situation or a good uh, path forward. But Baragon can really kind of tank some of those hits. I think if we can get a uh, a shield, we're feeling pretty good in turn one. Uh. It's immune to player card effects. As a travel, either exhaust Smeagol or discard one random card from each player's hand. After Smeagol's secret way is explored, each player exhausts a character he controls or discards one random card from their hand. There we go. Smeagol is a 2 2 2 5. Immune to player card effects. First player gains control of Smeagol. After the player's qu quest unsuccessfully, we have to flip Smeagol to Gollum. We do not want to do that because when he flips over to Gollum, he becomes the same stat line 
He's immune to all player card effects that are not the one ring. And then he's going to just be attacking us. The annoying thing is, is that then we don't have Smeagol, which is needed for the quest. Skyray. Yeah, right, Gourish Mill? Yeah. Are you talking about that the, uh, the Nazgul, or are you talking about Arkham Horror? Because I, I agree with both of those. <laughs> this is a uh, Elven Light deck. If we can get in our opening hand a Elven Light and a Shield, ooh, we're feeling good. Mm, that'd be so. That'd be so nice. We are playing with Frodo Baggins, Baragon, who is a Sentinel for defense. This is our defender here. Lower the cost to play weapon and armor attachments on Baragon by two. We have Arwen. We can discard a card from our hand to add a resource to a Noldor hero's resource pool or to Aragon, but we don't have Aragon. Um, and then we have Glorfindel after he commits to a quest by ex after he exhausts and commits to a quest, we have to raise our threat by one. I'm honestly kind of thinking it may be worth to throw spears back onto this deck. We had Baragon doing a lot of damage there, but I think we'll do well. I'm going to start with six cards. Excellent. We got a Northern Tracker, Elrond's Council, Power of Orthanac, Gladium's Greeting, Gandalf, and a Swordsman. We're going to mulligan. While these are really good cards, we don't have any of the build cards that we need. We just have a lot of cards that are going to prevent uh, other situations from happening. Let's also set our threat real quick. So we have uh, 10 plus 1, 11. 9 plus 1 is 10, 21. 5 plus 1 is, uh, what did I say, 21, 27. So we're going to start with 27. And the way that I read this, and maybe chat can help me out, the plus 2 threat that I had to add last time, we don't have to do this time, correct? I, I think we're just sitting with the 27 here. We're not keeping this hand, but we would have gotten a dagger of Western Nissies. We're fine with that. Yeah, I want I want Light of Eleanor. A Stargazer would also be nice because... Hey, Starry, there he is. Sweet hero lineup. Yeah! Uh, I I love Arwen. I think Arwen's just such a such a fun hero. Um, the The ramp that Arwen provides is really, really cool. Ramp slash card draw if you're running into, uh, if you're running Elven Light. I think the plus two is permanent. I will check the campaign card real quick though. I appreciate you. I'm gonna go ahead and add it and we can take it away if uh, that is not the correct. I'm not too, too scared about the threat though. Cause we, we do have a lot of threat reduction in the deck. Alrighty, we are stuck with this hand. Let's see what we got. We got a Swordsman. We got our Shield. We got a Test of Will. Power, Northern Tracker, and a Galadrium's Greeting. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Our top card is a Brace. Is a Brace. So play only if you control the Ring Bearer. We can add two. We can choose two of these options. Heal two damage from a hero. Two resources to a hero's resource pool. Choose a player to draw two cards. Or reduce a player's threat by two. Excellent. We're going to all get a money. And then at the end of the planning phase, either raise each player's start by one or exhaust the ring bear. We will have to make that choice here in a second. Okay. First up, we're just going to throw the shield onto Baragon, giving him a six defense. Let's go ahead and spend two resources to play a swordsman. Get some of that quest power going. We could, let's go ahead. I think we're going to go ahead and play Brace of Conies. Um, we're going to play Brace. We're going to add it to the victory display. Um, and actually, we're going to do this before we play the Swordsman, just in case we draw into something that we want to play. Yeah, the plus two threat is permanent for the campaign, just like how the bird. Okay, sweet. Thank you. So we're going to draw two cards. Knights of the Swan and a Gandalf. And then let's go ahead and add two resources to Arwen's resource pool. Those are the two choices that we chose there. We'll go ahead and spend two to play the Swordsman. Let's spend one to play Knights of the Swan. And I could be absolutely bamboozling myself if there is things that affect allies. I didn't really look through the deck. I uh, did not have as much time as I wanted to this morning to prepare. But here we are. It's going to be good. We're going to keep the one resource for a test of will. We're going to continue to build up... Uh, 
resources for Gandalf drop and a Northern Tracker drop. Now, a Northern Tracker drop on this turn, we could have played a Northern Tracker. However, this is a meta player card effect, so there's really no benefit to getting Northern Tracker out this turn, especially if we don't use our Test of Will. We can drop it next turn if we wanted. And then we always have the option to discard a card with Arwen to get more resources. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, excellent. Okay. So that will be that. Move my sans box a little bit. Let's go ahead and start questing. Um, we've got one, two, three. One, two. One, two, and we're only showing two right now. So that's seven. If we do quest through this, we do get a Nazgul. Which is unfortunate. Um, we can we would have to discard a random card from our hand or exhaust the one ring. And if we don't exhaust the one ring, the Nazgul would engage us, which we could tank with a Baragon. Are we okay just taking the Nazgul right now? That'd be kind of crazy, right? Right? Oh, we are we are also going to raise our threat by one uh, at the end of the planning phase due to a heavy burden. No, we'll exhaust Frodo. We don't need Frodo. Um, I think I'm okay taking the Nazgul right now because we have we have we have some attack but we have the defense that's needed so let's just quest for seven we're showing two let's flip into a two so while the deep dark passage is in the staging area it gains force when any amount of progress will be placed on a location in the staging area reduce that amount by one. Oh, that's so mean nice travel we can exhaust smeagol to travel here it is showing two threats so we are going to place three which will clear here after it is explored, searching counter deck and discard pile for the Morgul Wraith and add it to the staging area. Which I believe there are two of these in here. Alrighty, so our 45 threats, four, or 45 engagement costs, four uh, threats, five attack, four defense, nine health. Cannot have non Morgul attachments. While the One Ring is exhausted, it gets minus 30 engagement costs and gains immune to player card effects. Then, the first player must either exhaust the one ring or discard one random card from each player's hand. If we exhaust the one ring, the wraith is going to engage us immediately. Um, we will exhaust the one ring. Okay. We are going to travel to the secret way here. Because we cannot place progress here. So if we travel here, we automatically lose, I think, right? Yeah, progress cannot be placed on underground locations. Yeah, so if we if we travel here, we lose the game. <laughs> Which is just kind of funny. So we are going to travel to the secret way here. And then engagements, we're going to get the wraith. Let's go ahead and defend. Six to five, a shadow effect. If it destroys a character, discard a random card from your hand. We are good. And then we are going to swing back with one, three into the four defense. Let's go. <laughs> but, but we're trying to attack. And that's the important part. All right. Let's increase our threat. Stand up. And, oh, this is actually... Discard each Nazgul in the staging area and not engage with you. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if it would be worth it to run like one of the cards that push the enemies back to the staging area for that. Um, but I think we can kind of just kind of hit the, the Morgul Wraith and be okay. Okay. So we increased our threat. Let's take our quest points back down. The top of the round, we're going to draw into an Elrond's Council. I do like seeing that. Let's pass out some money. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about dropping Gandalf to draw some cards. Because I think I want to... I think I really want to draw cards. Um, 
We also get Gandalf. Because I think when we push here, we're going to get Shelob to the staging area. And she's not great. She's indestructible, cannot have attachments. At the beginning of the quest phase, either place a resource on her or she makes an immediate attack against the first player. That is at the beginning of the quest phase. Um, she is going to heal all the damage also when we do push to quest 3, so we don't need to be putting damage on her. Um, and she gets plus 1 threat for each resource on her. And then we will have to destroy her at the end of the... or to, to win the quest. So that's going to add a 4 to the staging area. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm ready to push through that. We could use Gandalf to start throwing some damage on this Wraith. I think that may be the right... Did I hear you say you don't have Baragon Spear in the deck? I don't think I do. I think I took that out. Um, I don't remember... I don't remember what we had in there for that. But yeah, I, I, I think I need to put it in there. We had, what was, I think there was a reason that we. Yeah. But if we play Gandalf right now, we get a lot of card draw, which is, let's just, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're going to use two, four, and a ring bear for five to play Gandalf. We're going to draw three cards. We got Elrond's Council again. Nice. A tree troll saw scout and a ether swordsman. Not an elven light quite yet. Don't let uh Shalab accumulate resources then. She's a pain if you don't have direct damage. What's a Yeah. I mean like I think I I'm hoping that I will have enough attack. Once we, yeah, good call, good call. Okay, I would, I should have definitely hung on to a resource here, but let's go ahead and toss. I'm gonna, I'm gonna discard a card to get a resource, just so that we do have a test of will play. What card should that be? We're gonna uh I'm gonna discard uh Troll Skull Scout to get a resource on Arwen. The problem is stage three cancels damage and removes a resource. Oh, so you have to hit her an extra time per re ha <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Is it cancels all damage? Yeah, that that's that's annoying. That's real annoying. Nice. All right. Well, that's that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> okay. So what's kind of cool here is that we do have uh, two Elrond's councils, so we can use Elrond's councils to kind of boost up and make sure that we do succeed in this quest. Um, because I do want to keep Gandalf. I want to keep as many things around as possible so that we can throw as much damage at the wraith. That we can. And like we have three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, thirteen. So thirteen is enough damage. So if we can quest with just Arwen and Frodo and succeed, we should be good. The spear is great to just pick off the resources. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. That, that's a, that's a really good point. For some reason, I thought it was like Miss N in the, our Grey Havens playthrough where it was like for every point of damage, it canceled. So that'll be fun. Now I'm really hoping for an unexpected courage. All righty. Let's quest with Arwen for three. One, two, three. And we are going to quest with Frodo for one, two. So that is five. We do have two Elrond councils to take it up to seven, but I think we should be fine. We're only showing two. I'm going to flip into when revealed. The first player must choose search the encounter deck, discard pile, and victor display for a Nazgul enemy and add it to the staging here or exhaust the one ring and reveal the top card of the encounter deck. Let's go ahead and just cancel this. 
because I think we're going to get some major tempo here if we don't have to reveal another card. Because now we should be able to take out that Nazgul. We just pushed through here. So we're going to pull out Shelob. Um, but we don't have to deal with that this round. Alrighty. So after it's explored, exhaust a character he controls or discards a random card from the hand. Let me count my damage again. So we have 3, 7, 8, 10, 12. That's not enough to kill it. What? Oh, I miscounted already. Oops. Was I expecting to attack with Frodo or something? Yeah. Uh, let's exhaust Knight of this one. That's fine. We'll take out the we'll take out the Nazgul later. And we push. Add Shilab to the staging area and shuffle all cards from the Great Spider Encounter set into the encounter deck and the discard pile into the encounter deck. 16 threat. Shelob cannot leave the staging area and Smeagol cannot attack or defend. Alrighty, so that's also good to know. She, uh, Smeagol cannot attack or defend. I, I, oops. Uh, so we're definitely not taking out the Wraith. Uh, each player cannot play or put into play more than one ally each round. No more than four progress can be placed on this stage each round. We're going to get Shelob uh, at the beginning of the quest phase. We're going to either place a resource or they're going to make an immediate attack. That's okay. Though. And then we got the great spider encounter set. We're going to shuffle with the discard pile into the encounter deck. So now we're showing a lot. Oh, I'm going to just travel here. I'm going to travel. I'm going to exhaust Smeagol because he can't attack or defend. So we might as well use Smeagol's activation to travel and pay the travel cost and get that out of the staging area. <laughs> that worked out. So we can only place four on it each round. We do have to deal with the big spider now and this wraith. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. All right. Nice buy the same token, Brett. You use the link down below in the video description. You can get five percent off your buy the same token order, as well as support the channel because I get a little bit of money too. Okay, um, so it is encounter phase. Let's go ahead and defend with Baragond. It's going to be five, no shadow effect. We take no damage, and we are going to attack for three, seven. Eight, no, nine, nine. So there's nine damage. So that's five damage on the. That's cool. Alrighty, four left. If we get another Gandalf, we can pop him. Okay. End of the round, Gandalf will leave play. We will increase our threat. We will stand up. I do like how thematic these quests are. We're going to draw into another Northern Tracker. All right. Let's pass out some money. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and spend two to play the one ally that we can this round, which is the another copy of the Swordsman. So now all of our outland characters have plus two willpower, which is pretty awesome. We don't need a resource for a test of will, so we don't need to discard any cards. Um, there is a chance that we play some Elrond's Councils this round, so we can push through this and just get rid of that. I would like to place at least four progress there. I do think that we need to block with Baragond against the Nazgul. Do we just do we do we not quest unsuccessfully? Do we quest barely successfully so that we can get rid of this Nazgul? Because we have two, four, five, eight, 
eight damage or eight right there, which is enough to take them out. So if we don't use this half of the table, this group can take out the Nazgul. So if we can quest with Arwen, Smeagol, and Frodo, which we 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 should be fine, especially with the Elrond councils we have in our hand. Uh, I think we do that. I think we have to solve this problem. So. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm good with that. Um, so we are going to place a resource here. So it's now a five threat there. We are at 31. I think a issue could be as if we flip another enemy. But we have Frodo, we can cancel that. We can, we can kind of gamble a little bit on the... Oh, and then we're raising a threat by one. I don't think I did that last turn, so let's raise our threat by one again. Okay. I think I'm pretty much always choosing the raise threat here. And it's raised each player's threat by one, so that's a little bit more brutal in multiplayer, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and quest with Arwen for three. Quest with Smeagol for two. That's five. We'll quest with Frodo. Four or seven. We're showing five. I'm gonna flip into a orc of uh Kurth Ungol. When revealed, either discard one random card from each player's hand, or it makes an immediate attack against you with an attack of four. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna discard a random card because I don't want to take that attack. So we got we do have six, so we'll roll. We got a one. It's an Elrond's council. That's a little sad. That's fine. We still have another one. So we're going to play Elrond's Council to take us up to eight. We are showing seven, so we do quest successfully. We place a progress here. We reduce our threat by one, two, three. All right. I would have liked to hit two of those. I, I honestly would have probably been okay with getting rid of a northern tracker, but here we are. We're not going to engage either of these because they're mean. We don't want to. So we're going to block with Baragon. Six to five on the Nazgul. If it destroys the character, it does not. And then we are going to attack for three, five, six, eight, dealing four damage to take out the Wraith. Okay. I feel... A lot better having that gone. I want, I really want a. Oh, yeah, I really want a. Um, unexpected courage. Because if we can start blocking twice each round, <clears throat> especially with all of these shadow cards that discard random cards from our hand. Let's stand up, increase our threat to 31. We're going to draw into Hasty Stroke. That does help. We'll pass out some money. Elven Light makes this deck go zoom. And when we don't have it, it's very sad. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, showing seven. But I mean, we have so much quest at this point. Yeah. I really want an Elven Light. Uh, I think next turn we drop Northern Tracker. We can do that either with just the resources that we gain, or next if we do have to play a Hasty Stroke, we can uh, we can negate it. But I think I think we actually just take the attack here, so an attack of four instead of placing a resource, and then we're not engaging this Orc. But this two threat here is not actually so bad since we have the two Swordsmen out. We can just quest for like we're we're pretty we're pretty solid on quest power right now. So we're going to increase our threat to 32. We do have a Galadrian's greeting, so we do have a little bit of threat fixing in the deck. We're gonna take an immediate attack, which will block with Baragon. It's gonna be four, no shadow effect. So we're good there. We don't have to add the resource. But yeah, Jared, the the spear right now would be great. Oh, it'd be so nice. Yeah. We're showing seven. And let's uh let's think about our questing. Um 
Smeagol has to quest, right? He can't. He cannot attack or defend. Yep. Okay. So we're going to quest for one, two. We have one, two, three. One, two, three. Puts us at eight. One, two, three. Puts us at 11. We're showing. I really want to clear this guy out. So let's go one, two. We do have a panic button chump block here, or we could probably block and take some damage on Glorfindel if we needed to. Yes, 100%. Thank you. So the shadow card was actually Deep Dark Passage. Thank you. Yes. The Smeagol Seeker away did have a victory, and I just shuffled it in. Good call. Good. Jared with the eyes of a hawk. Specialize. Good call. Thank you. That was good. That was good. All righty. So we're questing for 13, showing 7. We're going to flip into Surge. Either flip Smeagol to Gollum, or Gollum makes an immediate attack. The first player may spend one... Uh, Fellowship resource and exhaust wandering to cancel this effect. Let's go ahead and do that. But it still surges into when revealed. Each location in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the round. The number of the staging area is less than the number of players. Reveal an additional encounter card. And then we've got Peril Surge. Oh my gosh. You have placed one resource on Shalab or she makes an immediate attack against you. We'll place one. Then this surges again. This is bad. Oh my gosh, it's another one. Um, I think we have to place a resource. No, we'll take we'll take the attack against the knight. I mean, four it destroys a character. We're gonna discard a random card from our hand. We're gonna actually hasty stroke that. Knight goes away, and then that surges into the spider's lair. That was insane. That was what we would call a surge train right there. Oh my gosh. Okay. When the spider's lair is explored, remove one resource from uh, Shelob. After the spider location becomes the active location, she makes an immediate attack against the first player. Northern Tracker looking real good right now. Holy cow, that was brutal. I saw the art and I was confused. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we quested for 13. We are showing... That's a 3? So we're showing... 5... Plus six, 11. So we actually only placed two progress here. That that gets, this is going to get dangerous very, very quickly. Need to get a northern tracker out there. Okay. We're not engaging any of those fools. So let's go ahead and stand up. I also, uh, a light of Eleanor would be great too. So many cards that I want. And do you know what would help us get those cards? Elven Light. We're going to increase our threat to... I think I just did increase our threat. Yeah. We're going to draw into Fellowship of the Ring. After a character is destroyed, discard Fellowship of the Ring. This does come in and gives each hero plus one willpower. I'm going to pass out some money. Okay. Um... I may, I may, the Fellowship of the Ring really right now is only giving us plus one willpower because we're not questing with Glorfindel and we're not questing with Baragon. So I think I'm just going to pitch Fellowship of the Ring to give us one resource. And then we're going to spend four resources to play Northern Tracker. I think getting Northern Tracker out right now, one Northern Tracker can defend in a pinch, but also we have... uh this this location that we want to clear yeah okay uh, starting to show a lot of threat up there i think we're gonna take a we're increasing our threat here to 34 we're gonna take a attack which we will block with baragond or discard a non-objective attachment you control oh no so we're going to lose the shield. 
There goes the shield. So now we're less less excited about taking those attacks. Um, shoot. Okay. So we are showing 511 in the staging. We're going to go ahead and quest for one with the Northern Tracker to place a progress here. I'm going to go three, three, seven. So that's nine total. We're going to go one, two, three with Arwen to take us to 12. We're showing 11. Yikes. Uh, let's go one, two here. And we're actually going to quest with Glorfindel for one, two, three, and increase our threat by one to go to 35. Okay, we're going to flip into attach to the hero you control and exhaust that hero. Uh, counts as a condition, limit one per hero. Treats the attached hero's text box as blank except for traits. Attached hero cannot ready. Ah, I was like, oh, that's actually really good for Glorfindel. It's not. Um, that's fine. We'll attach to Glorfindel. We do have a power of Orthnak to get rid of it. So, okay, we did. That's actually not too bad, right, for us, because we have an answer to this, and we didn't add any more to the staging area, so we're going to get to the push. We're showing 11. We quest for 17, which means that we get to place 6. 2 goes here, and 4 goes here, meaning that we hit that exactly perfect, because we can only place 4 each round. Uh, while it's in the staging area... I think I'm going to travel here because I think getting that three out of the staging area. Oh, but it's going to make an immediate attack. I think we will, we will, we will deal with that later. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's stand up. We'll increase our threat to 36. Give me a Gandalf. Give me a Gandalf. That'd be, that'd be something. I think, I think if we had Gandalf, we'd draw cards with him. Hasty Stroke. Come on, team. Let's go Doom 2. So we'll increase our threat by 1, 2 to discard this attachment. So we're at 38. We do have a Galadrium's Greeting, which I would like to play before we're forced to discard it. But I would also like to get a Northern Tracker out. If we get a Northern Tracker out next turn, then we can clear the layer. Man, Elven Light makes this deck go zoom. Ah! Elven Light, come on. Yep, okay. We do have Encounter Card Fixing here, so let's... Let's take the attack. We have a hasty stroke, so it's going to be four. Deal the attacking enemy two additional shadow cards. Um, I'm going to take that. First one, if it's Shalab, resolve, win revealed attack on Shalab's poison. That's the one we're going to hasty stroke. Um, so we're not going to attach this because we don't have an answer to it. And then no shadow effect, so we're good. Okay. Okay. We're I think that 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 hurt our tempo pretty bad, right? Because we don't have a card to discard for Arwen's ability, which means that we won't drop Northern Tracker, which means that we're sitting with this one more round. Not horrible. But I think we may actually just look at using Galadrium's Greeting next turn to reduce our threat because we're about to engage this dude. And I don't I don't want to engage that dude. Heavy burden. Increase our threat. Need to remember that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put heavy burden up here. Because that's going to help me remember. This is attached to Frodo, but this is going to help me remember. Not a, it's, it's the lamest excuse ever, but that card is blocked by my mic. Like, I can't actually see Frodo. <laughs> and so, that's, that's going to be my excuse. 
All right. So we're showing 11 again. Let's go ahead and quest with Northern Tracker. Place one there. That's one. We quest with all of these. It's nine. 12. 15. No, 14. Sorry. 14. We're not going to exhaust Glorfindel because then we're at too much threat. So we're showing 14 to 11. Blocked tunnel. When revealed, make blocked tunnel the active location. Returning any other active location. Exhaust a character with a weapon attachment to place three progress on blocked tunnel. Oh, interesting. That's cool. All righty. So that's going to place. We're showing 11. We quested for 14. We'll place three here. At least you have an excuse. I forget to trigger a heavy burden all the time and just have to raise my threat later in the <laughs> Yeah, right? We're not going to engage anything. And we're going to stand up. Increase our threat to 40. Hey, Valor. Now we can trigger all the Valor effects we have. Hey, test will. All right. Our heroes become rich without card draw. I think we have to play Gladrian's Grading here. And just hope. Spend three, play Gladrian's Grading, reduce our threat by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't see behind my mic. Two hours later. Hey, we won the scenario again. Oh, look, there are nine enemies behind the mic. Oh, no. I didn't see it. That's on me. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> nice. Um, I don't want to ditch the Northern Tracker. But we could ditch the Northern Tracker so that we have a resource for a test of will. But then we don't have any cards in our hand. The old hidden behind the mic trick. Yeah, we're just going to start stacking cards right here. I didn't see it. I guess we have Frodo that we can... Something that's really, really bad, we can Frodo. This is a really... I like this... I like this thematic location. You can exhaust weapons. Should make it its own sphere. <laughs> nice. Alrighty, let's just do the same thing. We'll quest for 14. Place that progress here. It will be nice to clear that. Um, not going to deal with the threat with Glorfindel. So we're going 14, showing 11. Oh, and Shelob's going to make the attack. We're going to block. No shadow effect. Okay. I'm going to flip into... Morgul Orc. When revealed, either discard one random card from your hand or reveal an additional encounter card. It engages at 35, which it's not engaging now. Um, it's only a one. It will engage next turn. Hey, how's it going? Opti Persona. I don't want to lose the Northern Tracker, but it's a 50-50 shot. I don't want to lose Tessa Will either, but one, two, or even odd. Even. Tessa Will, alrighty. How hard is this to learn compared to Marvel and Arkham? I would say that you know how to play Marvel and Arkham, it's a lot easier. Um, if you're approaching a living card game for the very first time, this is a tough one to learn. But if you are under, if you're familiar with all the weird nuances put into play, when played, cards, paying for cards, like the concepts that are behind a card game, it's not. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, it is the most complex of the three, I think, in terms of rules overhead. But if you have a if you have the foundation of Arkham and Marvel, you'll be fine. So we are showing twelve.
Yeah. So we're showing 12. We quested for 14. So we're going to place two here. One. Takes us to. Uh... Ugh. All righty. We're not engaging anybody. We're going to stand up. I don't think I, I don't think I did a heavy burden. So I'm actually going to have to raise my threat to 35, which will engage this guy. I'm going to block with Glorfindel. Attacking gets plus three. So he's attacking for six. So he kills Glorfindel. All right, that's a scoop. Boo! Boo! Oh, that was brutal. I did not realize that that was a thing that could happen. Wow, that okay. That's good to know. I do need I I need an elven light. I need an elven light to make this deck go. And yeah. I think I think Elven Light needs to be here. Uh and then also just with how many attacks we're actually taking, I think that um Mr. Frodo <laughs> Elven Light, Unexpected Courage, yeah, 100%. If we have an Unexpected Courage, we, like, we laugh at the face of, in the face of Shelob. Um, don't tell her I said that, please. Uh, <laughs> um, Shelob's Lair, no, we're good. Nope. Okay. Throw that everywhere. All right. All right, so we have to take out all the spiders, the great spider encounter sets, because those get shuffled in after a while. That, that, that was that was unfriendly. That was an unfriendly shadow card. I still like that. I still like that location. So I think it's important to think to try and stay on that first stage longer if we can and just build the board state and potentially see if we can grab elven light because that that just feels really good the spider encounter set's a big encounter set oh wait it's because those are none all right we got this So we're putting Cleft, Shelob, Great Spider Encounter set aside, Smeagol into play under the first player's control, Morg Veil, the active location, add Smeagol's secret way to the staging area, um, shuffling encounter deck. Then we're back to after uh, the secret way is explored, discard three random cards from each player's hand to discard a Nazgul enemy in the staging area. Again, I think we'll probably just play this by ear to see where we are at. Because once we explore here, we're going to add a enemy, or we're going to add one of the Nazguls to the encounter, or to the staging area. Um, then we have to discard a random card. So, I mean, like, if we can, if we can just sit there and not explore that for a little bit, the only hindrance is not being able to place progress on underground locations, which, if we flip an underground location, we do have to get a little bit of giddy up behind ourselves and start questing but if we don't i think we're fine i was playing multiplayer and sentinel defending with a hero for someone and the shadow card was discard the defending character bye bye curtain oh no dude that's a brutal shadow card the saga quest gets really mean the closer to mount doomy oh i bet i bet i was talking with uh caleb in one of the interviews and you know he was saying that the uh, the final quest in this is just absolutely brutal. All right. Let's get ourselves an Elven Light, a Light of the Val Light of Valinor. Let's get ourselves a Gondor Shield. Let's get ourselves It was really nice having those um those those outland questers. I don't remember what they're called right now. But it was really, really nice to have those. 
All right, we got this though. We got six cards. Oh, I'm gonna add the spear. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add my spears. Um, we're gonna go ahead and discard Elven spears. I think there's enough in this encounter set that's gonna discard cards, and so we do have a good number of ways to discard cards here. And so if we can toss these Elven spears, we don't necessarily have to. Although I do like being able to discard those um, out of turn. But that's going to grab us the Pokey Spears. I've done such a bad job of putting my cards away. <laughs> Spear of the Citadel, Spear of the Citadel. Go two for two there. All right. Okay. Having that in there, that's going to be nice. I mean, that unexpected courage. Oof. Ether swordsman. Or the, the swordsman. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get this. We got it. Okay. We got six cards. Elrond's Council, Test of Will, Greeting, Tracker, Swordsman, Sam. We're going to mulligan. We would have gotten a Light of Valinor. No, that's fine. I think Light of Valinor is honestly kind of the lower priority in terms of top priorities. Like, I, I still think it is one of those cards that we're really hunting for. But it's probably the lowest of the Unexpected Courage, Shield. Shield is actually not as needed. Although, plus four would be brutal. <laughs> uh, our starting threat is 29. With all the campaign stuff. We'll go to 29. Also, that leader of men would be great. Because how many times we successfully quested, there would be so many more resources. We would have been able to drop that northern tracker. I don't know if would have really helped that situation but we're gonna get six cards we're stuck with these six what do we got so we got sam dagger unexpected courage yes scout elven light and a swordsman let's freaking go and spear the citadel oh let's freaking go nice let's pass out some money that's a hand that's a hand my friends all righty What's a Let's drop Spear of the Citadel on Baragon? Let's toss Elven Light to give a resource to Arwen. I think at this point, um, we're going to spend two to play Ether Swordsman. We're going to spend one to play Sam. We reduce the cost of Sam by two if we control Frodo, which we do. Um, and then we'll deal with Elven Light later. But it's like, I think Elven Light's nice when you need things to play. Right now, we have got... And I'm going to go ahead and spend one to play Dagger on Glorfindel, which protects us against discarding an attachment because I want to keep the spear, and I'm okay discarding the Dagger if we need to. We'll drop Unexpected Courage next turn on Baragon and potentially play Elven Light. We'll see. Everything is coming up Millhouse. Exactly, yes. So after a player raises their threat, that player um, may spend a spirit resource to ready Sam. You get plus one to all their stats until the end of the round. Excellent. Do I have to ready Sam in order for him to get the plus stats? Or can I just spend the resource and not, um, not do the, the stat stuff here? Okay, so we're showing two. We do want to be pretty careful here. Um, we need to quest successfully, but not super successfully. Let's go ahead and go four. Um, oh, this is this is. Uh, we can get. I don't. I don't want the Nazgul. Actually, I don't. 
I don't mind the Nazgul right now. We can hit it with Baragon. And then Glorfindel can start messing with the Nazgul with a plus 5 attack. So actually, we're going to quest with Sam. We're going to go 4. But if we flip something that is more, we lose Smeagol. But we can cycle with Frodo. We're just going to go 6. We're just going to go 6 there. We're going to flip into... When revealed, the first player must choose to either search the encounter deck, discard pal, and victory display for a Nazgul enemy and add it to the staging area, or exhaust one ring and reveal the top card of the encounter deck. Um, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that so much. What's the question about Sam? So Sam says that after a player raises their threat, we can spend a, which we need to do from Heavy Rain, we can spend a spirit resource to ready Sam. He gets plus one, plus one, plus one until the end of the round. If he is already ready, can I spend the resource and just get the stat boost? Um, we're going to exhaust and reveal the top card in encounter deck. Each location in the staging area gets plus one until the end of the round. If the locations is less than the number of players. Okay. Okay, so we are showing three. We quested for six. So we're going to do three here. That's a victory. And then, oh. Oh, wait, hold on. This is bad. We're going to have to discard a random card from our hand. No, please don't be unexpected courage. Oh, no. um, Because I exhausted the one ring. Oh, that was brutal. Okay, so we're going to have to go get a Nazgul. I don't want the Nazgul. Okay, so it will be engaging us, and we are discarding a random card from our hand. Please, 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 please do not be... Oh, and he has a 5 attack. That's less good for Baragond. Hmm. I think you can. The Hero Sam gets the stab buff when he's ready, so it probably works the same. It doesn't say Ven. It doesn't say... Yeah, it doesn't have any conditional words saying that you have to do the beginning. And so I think I think it's fine. Alrighty. Even odd. Even. No, it's the unexpected courage. No. No. Oh, that was brutal. Shoot. Oh, ow. Um, we'll exhaust Smeagol to travel here. Or, or are we? Are we? We're going to leave it. We're actually not. We're going to deal with this and not deal with the mountain here. Because if we don't travel... We don't have to worry about it, and we can buy ourselves some time before we get Shelob. So we're going to engage here. Um, it gets minus 30 engagement costs, and it's immune to player card effects, so we don't actually get to ping a damage. But we're going to defend for 4 to 5. Discard a non-objective attachment you control. That's going to be the dagger here. We take a damage. We're going to attack for three, four, five, six, which will deal two damage. The hero is worded the exact same. A sentence break between the ready and stat boost. Okay, cool. Okay, stand up. Increase our threat to 31. We will draw into a outrider. Excellent. Pass out some money. We're going to spend one from Arwen's pool to play Elven Light to draw into a swordsman. Oh, I'm going to discard Elven Light to get a resource.
We're going to play Elven Light from our discard pile with Arwen's resource to draw Elrond's council. All right. We're, yeah, we're passing on playing Swordsman this turn. I don't think Swordsman is super necessary. I'd rather th get that card draw at this point. Um, cool. All right. Okay. We're showing two. We just have to quest successfully. We should be fine. And I do really want to start pushing this uh, Wraith start dealing oh we have to actually we really really have to because he's just gonna pick off baragon that after a while mm. okay let's go two four we can flip a four which yeah we can't risk so let's go six we'll flip into a two Either discard one random card from each player's hand, or he makes an immediate attack against us. Uh, we will we'll discard a card. We'll re-roll a six. Oh no, it's the scout. One of the ones I definitely did not want to discard. We did successfully quest, so we do not have to flip Smeagol. We are going to take an attack. We will defend with Baragond, which will deal a damage here. This attack destroys a character. Does not. Baragond takes one damage. Okay. So we'll go three, four, five, six to deal two more damage. Okay. Stand up. Increase our threat to 32. Stand up here. Draw into Test of Will. That's nice. Pass out money. We'll discard Elven Light and we'll play Elven Light with Arwen's ability and resource to get a Hasty Stroke. So we have a Hasty Stroke and we have an Elven Light, which is really nice. Or a Hasty Stroke and a Test of Will. I think we will probably drop the swordsman here. Spend two to drop a swordsman. Um, yeah. Baragon is in, I would consider, pretty nasty danger at this point. With uh, We do have a hasty stroke. So we add three damage, it's not enough. But if we save a swordsman... That can be the fourth damage, which can take out. So if we can, if we can quest. Oh yeah, because this is now three, five, seven. We're showing four. We have a Elrond's Council. I think we will be okay. Um, I did not do this last time or this time, so we'll go ahead and add two. It does not help having it here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and discard Elrond's Council, or play Elrond's Council, I should say, to reduce our threat by one, two, three, and give Swordsman plus one. We're going to quest for three. Five, seven. I'm sorry, four, six, eight. Eight showing four. And we have two, three, four, seven. Deal the three damage. Spear does one. Okay. Flip into when reveal each player discards one random card from his hand and one non objective he attachment he controls. That's brutal. These cards are mean. We're going to have to have test of will that. Or we could. No, we're going to test of will that. I don't want to exhaust the one ring because then. We don't get the ping damage here. And we're just hoping for a non-shadow card. So we successfully quest. We're going to take this. We're going to block here. Destroys a character. It does not. That's big. Okay. We'll go one there. One here. We'll swing with everybody, which will take out the Nazgul. Okay. Increase our th threat to 32. Stand up. 
We need we need some healing. We need some healing for Baragon. Draw into that also works. I shields worked just not just as well, but pretty close to just as well as that. So let's go ahead and drop a shield onto Baragon. We probably will go ahead and travel here. I think I'm ready to push through. We'll discard Elven Light and then play Elven Light with the resource that we got with Arwen to get another... Uh, there we go. Sweet. Okay. We'll spend two for a scout. Okay. We do have a hasty stroke. We can toss a card with Trolls Call Scout if we do engage here. Feeling... Okay. That was good. That was good. That was good. We're showing four. Um, we'll quest for six, eight. I think eight should be fine, right? I don't think there are any fives in there. At least Brace can heal. Yep, yep. Bra Brace can heal. That's what. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Flip into a deep dark passage. While it is in the staging area, when any amount of progress we place on a location in the staging area, reduce the amount by one. We have to exhaust Smeagol to travel there. So we will go ahead and exhaust Smeagol to travel here for the secret passage. We will go ahead and engage the orc. Um, we'll go ahead and block um, and deal a damage here. And we do block. Shadow, deal the attacking enemy two additional shadow cards. The first one being, it gets plus X, so it gets plus two, so we're still safe there, and then no shadow effect, because we do have six defense now. Beautiful. We're going to go three, four, five, six, seven, which is enough to take it out, and then we're going to discard Elven Light to keep Trolls... Uh, the scout around. And then before, we're going to go ahead and play Elven Light from the discard pile to draw into a northern tracker. Oof. Nice. Okay. We'll stand up. Increase our threat to 33. Draw into a faint. Nice. We'll pass out some money. We will discard and play Elven Light with Arwen to get another Elven Light. Alrighty. Um, cool. We have a hasty stroke. We have. I think I'm going to keep the hasty stroke instead of playing the Outrider. I don't think we really need the Outrider right now. Because we can't place progress on that underground location. And I would rather keep the hasty stroke because that's the only thing that could or that that could prevent Baragon from dying. Which does seem pretty important at this point. The Outrider. The Outrider will be really nice to get onto the table here soon. We could also get a northern tracker onto the table next round. We do want that brace though. I'd want I want I want to be able to attack something. Because I can then discard Elven Light. Um, discarding a random card from our hand. When we travel here, or when we, uh, when we, I think we will. I think we will. Um. Just discard a random card. I don't want to discard hasty stroke. I feel like hasty stroke, hasty stroke is the worst to discard. Northern tracker. Maybe we won't. Maybe we, we can just exhaust somebody. I don't think it's actually gonna be that bad. Okay. Showing zero. Where we show or we show two. Um, let's go three six. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I'm good with questing for six. Um, we'll flip into a one. 
when it is in the staging area, after a win revealed effect is canceled, place one resource on Shelob. Place one resource on Shelob to travel here. This should not be in the encounter set. No, it should be. It should be. Just kidding. Interesting. Okay. So we cannot travel there until we hit Sheila, but we did go three because for six. So this will go ahead and we can exhaust um, a character or discard a card from our hand. Um, we can exhaust Sam and then we'll push. Add Shelob to the stage here. Shuffle all cards from the Great Spider Encounter set into the Encounter deck. So Shelob is plus one for each resource, and she is indestructible. All of these get shuffled in. Then uh, each player cannot play or put into play more than one ally each round. She cannot leave the staging area, and Smeagol cannot attack or defend. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we'll have exhausted Smeagol instead. Uh, no more than four progress can be placed on this each round. 16. I 100% did not do a heavy burden yet again. Um, we'll go ahead and travel here. Oh, no, we will. We'll continue our... We actually exhausted Sam, yeah. Because we have to use Exhaust Smeagol to travel there. Okay. 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 Uh, so we will be able to get a Northern Tracker out next turn, which feels pretty good. Uh, in a couple of turns, we'll be able to just clear this guy. Um, and not need to travel and place a resource. Although placing resources on Shelob is not as bad as it was last game now that we have the spear out. But if we do hit a attachment removal, we will have to get rid of the spear, not the shield, I think, to keep Baragond around. Would love to get a brace right now. Okay. That's that. So we'll increase our threat to 35. We will stand up. We'll draw into a Gladium's Greeting. That's going to help. That's going to help. Okay. Pass out some money. We're going to discard and play Elven Light with Arwen's resource to get another swordsman. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um... I think we go Northern Tracker first. I think Northern Tracker is the better first play, considering we can only put one in each round. Uh, but yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll spend four to play Northern Tracker just so we can start pinging that. And then a Swordsman next turn. Each one of these will be questing for four. We'll feel pretty good about that. Um, we do have a feint. Um, oh, this is a combat action, so I can't actually cancel the attack in the planning phase. Um, we do have a swordsman though, so I don't know if adding that we're gonna we're gonna add a resource here. We're gonna increase our threat and remember that. Um, because I think we have a lot of quest. We have a lot of questing power, and I just want to try and avoid playing my hasty stroke as many times as possible. All right. Let's quest with Northern Tracker. We'll place a progress here. So that's three, six, nine, 11, 14. So we're going 14. We're showing six. Here's a five. 
Um, we'll go ahead and go two more with Frodo to try and hit that four here. Uh, Den of Knights. When it's in the staging area, when a win reveal effect is canceled, place one resource. We have to place a resource to travel there. So it's the same one here. Um, Northern Trackers will just start clearing those. So we are showing five, seven. Requested for 16, so we're going to place 9, 3, and 4. Perfect. Okay. Because we can only place 4 each round. But that clears here. We're not going to travel, because I think the 1 in the staging area is... And we don't have any cancels. So, <laughs> so like, even if we were scared of that, we don't have a cancel. So, we're fine. We'll stand up. At 36. Okay. Increase our threat to 37. Draw into Light of Valinor. Now, now we're cooking. Let's freaking go. All righty. We will discard and play Elven Light with Arwen to get another Light of Valinor. Okay, well, that, that's actually fine because then... We don't mind discarding Light of Valinor. And then we will spend the two... Do we spend the two resources to put the Swordsman into play right now? I think we do. Actually, I don't know if we do. I don't know if we need the Swordsman right now. Um, the reason that we wouldn't do that is it maintains a resource for a hasty stroke. Um, and do do we need... I mean, it's a lot... It's, it's, it's a lot of extra questing, um, but we're only showing seven. I think we should be fine. We don't have an active location, so I think we can hold off on playing the Swordsman one round. We honestly may hang off on playing Light of Valinor. We may actually just keep Light of Valinor in our hand and play an Outrider, and we can start clearing these way faster. That's an interesting idea. I think we're going to do that. So instead of playing Light of Valinor, we're going to spend. No, because then it's it's the same situation where we wouldn't have a hasty stroke. I think I would rather have the hasty stroke play. Are there any shadow effects that are going to be really, really bad for us? I don't know if there are. Um, I actually don't know if there are that many shadow effects that are horrible for us. Um, so getting that, getting the Outrider out is actually, I think we're going to do that. Let's just go ahead and get the Outrider. And let's hope we don't get a shadow effect. Yeah. There's a shadow effect that makes Shelob attack again. Okay. That's good to know. I think we can like, we can, that, that's really good to know. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I think at that point. It's a, we like toss in, we would probably toss Sam in front of the attack. We have enough questing at that point. So I think we'll be good with that. So let's, uh, we'll go one, two here. And we will place a progress here. Yep. We will... And we get a plus one because we do did not explore. We'll go one, which will place a progress here and here. We'll go one, two, three. One, two, three. We're increasing our threat here. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna exhaust the ring bearer. We don't I don't think yeah, we're just gonna exhaust the ring bearer, protect the threat. Uh Shelob is going to We'll place a resource. So we're actually showing six, seven, eight. Showing eights. We're questing for nine right now. We'll quest for Smeagol for one, two. Not too bad now, but there's also a shadow effect that gives Sheila plus one attack for each resource on her. Another reason to not let resources build up. Yeah, so I think this is the um, this is the maximum amount of resources we want to put on her. Because any more would kill Baragon. We do have that hasty stroke, but we cannot pay for it right now. So I think I think we're good there. We'll go one, two, three. So that's 14 showing, what did I say, eight? Uh, we're gonna flip into a orc. My sleeve is messed up on this guy. 
Either discard one random card from each player's hand, or it gains, uh, makes a immediate attack against you. I think I will take the immediate attack. Um, because I don't, I don't want to discard a random card. Uh, so we'll make the immediate attack. We'll block with Baragond. It's going to be four. Discard a non-objective attachment you control. Um, this is why I wanted Light of Felinor. Uh, shoot. Oh, we 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 don't have a hasty stroke. Just kidding. Um, yeah. So we'll toss the spear of the citadel. That's gonna be sad. A lot of shadow effects only trigger if Shelob is attacking, so it's much less scary if other enemies come out. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Alrighty, we quested for 14. We're showing 2, 3, 4, 10. So we add 4 more. Ah. That was brutal. I want my... Sh oh, I, don't, I don't want that to happen. Alrighty. Um... Do we engage there? Um, attacking for four. I don't think we do. We don't have we don't have a defense strategy for it. Um, we could block with trolls. No. The only reason I would want to engage right now is to. I don't know. We actually may need to engage. The forty no, I can deal I can deal with the, the threat in the staging area better than I can with an enemy right now. So let's stand up. And we'll go to thirty eight. Okay. We will draw into another scout. Alrighty. Let's pass out money. So much money on Frodo, it's insane. We'll discard and play Elven Light. We got a test of will. That's that's good. Um I really okay. We're gonna we're gonna put Elven Light onto the table. Our Light of Valinor onto the table. It protects the shield. I we need to protect the shield. Um, we do have a hasty stroke, so we can we we can cancel the attack that's going to happen with Shelob. Um, and then this thing, this thing is not going to engage us this round. Um, Yeah. Okay. Uh, tough, 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 tough spot. Tough spot. Um, let's exhaust the ring bear. Um, from a heavy burden. Shelob is going to make an attack. We will block with Baragon. Six or four, just four. The attacking enemy is Shelob. Place one resource on her. Then she gets plus one for each resource on her. Oh, you place a resource on her, then do it. No. Okay, we're going to hasty stroke that 100% because then Baragon dies if we, if we don't do that. So that's not going to happen. Ooh, okay. So it is place a resource. Then she gets... Oh, jeez. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's exciting. We'll go Outrider to place one. So that's two. Go with... There it is. I forgot to place a resource. I'm glad I had AC stroke. Clear here. Um, so we're showing six, seven, nine. We'll go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. That's 11. Uh, one, two, three from Glorfindel. That's 14.
14. We're showing nine. Let's go one, two, three. Let's just continue to push. Oh, it's another Morgul Wraith. That's excellent. While the Wandering is exhausted, it gets minus 30 engagement costs and gains immune to player card effects. We could cycle that card. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, jeez. We could faint it. We could we could bring it in. We could faint it. Actually, we may bring this guy in and faint him. Um, he only has two, so we could go three, five. That'd be three damage. That'd be four damage. We could kill this guy if we wanted to. Um, I think I think I'd rather hang on to the faint. We're gonna get a swordsman, so we should be fine. Okay, so this is six, ten, twelve. 13 and we went 17 and we've gotten really lucky on hitting this four really really well okay so we're at 12 we have one more successful quest we do push through there there's a chance we never deal with the wraith because we don't actually have to kill the wraith to win the quest we just have to kill shelob and then smeagol's gonna become Gollum. um All right, let's stand up. Increase our threat to 39. Oh, geez. Draw into power of Lickmax. All righty, that's nice. Um, pass out some money. I want a Gandalf. All right. So, um, so what happens when we push? Smingle the Golem, heal all damage from Shelob. Each player places one resource on Shelob. Oh, that's dangerous. Um, if Golem is defeated, add him to the victory display. While Shelob has at least one resource, she gains. Players cannot defeat the stage unless Shelob and Golem are in the victory display. Okay. Um, this comes while it is in the victory display. Shelob gets plus two and loses indestructible. And gain she love engages the first player. Place one resource on the she love to travel there. So I think we're gonna start turning a lot of these into chump blockers. Um, we're gonna discard Elven Light to get plus one resource here. We're at thirty nine. I really don't want to engage that thing. Um, so I could play Gladium's Greeting right now. And reduce my threat down and not have to worry too, too much about getting engaged here. I could put Swordsman into play and get a huge boon to Questing Power. I could go Elven Light to draw a card and hopefully find something. I do have a Faint. Um, so we can, we can Faint Shelob one round. We play Swordsman. We also have a Test of Will, so we can cancel whatever comes out. We cannot exhaust the One Ring, because then we get then we get the Wraith. We don't have... I think we want to push. I think we really, really want to push now, because we can start damaging Shelob, and I think that's important. Um, oh, we actually have to go here. We have to place a resource on Shelob to travel there. But. No, it's at the beginning of the quest phase. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah. Uh, um, okay. I'm going to keep faint. Alrighty. Um. Let's spend two to play a swordsman. We're just going to get that out and we're going to just blitz with questing there. Um, we have a test of will in hand. We have a faint in hand. So we're feeling good there. We'll exhaust the ring bearer, not raise our threat. We'll go ahead and quest for two. One, two. 
will northern tracker for one, which will clear this location. Uh, oh, and Shelob. Ooh. We'll take the immediate. We'll take an attack. No shadow effect. Sweet. Okay. Whew. Okay. Uh, this is four now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So requesting for 18, we are showing 6, 10, 12. So I think we should be okay. Um, let's go ahead and quest for with Sam. Let's quest with Arwen. Two, three. I'm going to flip into Win Reveal. She gets plus two until the end of the phase. She makes an immediate attack against each player in player order. We will go ahead and test a will that. Okay. So we do place enough to push. I cleft to the staging area. Immune to player card effects. While it's in the victory display, she gets plus two, loses indestructible, and gains. Shelob engages the first player. Place one resource on Shelob to travel here. Uh, flip Smeagol to Gollum. Immune player card effects. Gollum engages the first player during the refresh phase. He makes an immediate attack. When he's defeated, flip him to Smeagol, exhaust Smeagol. But this is going to tell us that we don't do that. Each player places a resource on Shelob. Oh, so many resources. Jeez. If Gollum is defeated, add him to the victory display. When Shelob has at least one resource, whenever she would be dealt any amount of damage, Cancel that damage, discard one resource from her instead. Okay. We'll travel here and place a resource here. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and blitz through this, which we we can. I think I think we can put a lot of lot of threats around. Um And if we blitz through this, then we can not, we don't need our swordsmen as much, and we can start using them as chump blockers. She loves attacking twice regardless. Oh my gosh, that's so brutal. Holy cow. Um, okay. It is engagement time. We're not going to engage the orc. We are going to take an attack from Gollum. I think we're going to take that undefended. Um, if it is a, f if it does add four, then we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, let's, let's block with the outrider. No, let's block with Sam. So, uh, attacking against plus X where X is, there you go. Okay. So Sam dies. So that would have, that would have lost our hero. So we're good there. Uh, we will attack for three, five, seven, which will take out Gollum. And we're going to discard Elven Light to keep Trolls, the scout, around. Okay. Stand up. It is 11.43. We're good. Increase our threat to 40. That's the dangerous number. Actually, it may not be that. It may not be too, too dangerous. Draw into a northern tracker. We have so much money. Okay. Um... Let's play Elven Light from our discard pile. Get a Northern Tracker. Don't, don't really need the Northern Tracker, and then we'll discard to get a resource back. Um, okay, so we will engage this dude this round. Um, we can toss a Northern Tracker in front of that. There's a chance that a Northern Tracker actually survives that attack. Okay. Okay. 
or mm, making an immediate attack. We're going to block with Baragon. No shadow effect. Let's go. Um, we will raise our threat instead of exhausting Frodo. Um, okay, let's quest. I'm going to go 4, 8, 12. Uh, we're going to keep that. 15, 18. We're showing 18. And up here we have 8, 12, 14. Oh my gosh. We'll go 1, 2 here. A flip into She Love gets plus 2 and makes an immediate attack against each player in player order. Okay. Um, we will block with the, the scout. So there's going to be uh, six, two additional shadow cards. If she's going to make an additional attack and she's going to get another resource and attack and get a lot. So she's making another attack. Um, we'll block with the Outrider this time. It'll be six. If this destroys a character, we're going to discard a random card from our hand. Okay. And I think that's probably going to spell doom for our, our, our quest. This card, this card, which is... Yep, that's brutal. That's... Oh, jeez. So we're going to have to deal with the Nazgul again. Alrighty, so that's fun. Um, Cool. So we went 20. We're showing 9, 11, 15. So we'll place 5 here. She's going to engage us. And 1 here. This guy will engage us. We are going to go ahead and spend our first tactics resource, and actually it's not, but faint Shelob. Looks like Shelob ate Millhouse on that fit, yeah. And then here we're going to defend. It's going to be four, no shadow effects, so we don't lose the northern tracker, so that's nice. We don't have enough damage to push anything back. We'll attack here and go one damage there. Okay. Yikes. That's brutal. That's brutal. Okay, we'll stand up. Increase our threat to 42. Losing that unexpected courage is brutal. Okay. Draw a card. The power of Orthnak. Scenario name? Yeah, she loves Lair. Okay. Um, and she's still attacking twice every single round. Yo, ho, ho, not good. Um, okay. We'll discard Elven Light, play Elven Light to grab a Knights of the Swan. All right, let's go ahead and play a Knights of the Swan. So each one of these swordsmen are two attack now. Um, we'll play the other copy of Elven Light to draw into a Galadrim's Greeting. That that's potentially very good. I think we're going to, we're taking three attacks. One attack can be blocked with Barragon. Um, I think we play Galadrim's Greeting right now. Go ahead and spend three to play Greeting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down to 36. 
I need maybe a song over here for Frodo so we can start playing more cards. Okay. Uh, he's going to attack. Or she loves going to attack for six. Um, we'll block with the Northern Tracker. And we are going to raise our threat one from this. No shadow effect. Sweet. Northern Tracker goes away. We don't have a feint. I think one of these North, or these swordsmen is going to be a block for here. And we'll block Baragond here. But let's get the let's get the needed progress out. So let's go uh, four, eight, eleven. And this is we we have to do five damage. So if we attack here, that's enough to take a resource off. We're showing four, questing for 11. Let's go ahead and go one, two more, just so we can try and get enough. And then we can toss the swordsman. Choose to search the victory display for Nazgul enemy and add it to the staging area. Okay. We're going to grab the Nazgul enemy up here. I'd rather the Nazgul be in the staging area than in Gage with me at this point. Okay, so that's eight. So we're going to place five on here, which is not quite enough. Take us to six. Okay. We're going to block with Shelob, or Shelob's attack. It's plus zero. That's fine. Swordsman dies anyways. Baragon. Arwen. Spirit Fendel. Spirit Fendel. Nice. Uh, and then we're going to block here with Baragon. We're good. And we're going to attack for one, two, five, which will remove a... Remove that. Stand up. Or we're going to attack. We're going to leave the resource here. We're actually just going to kill this guy. Then I don't. Yeah, that's better. Threat goes up. We'll stand up. Draw into brace. Huge. Huge. That's out money. If you were set up, you would actually like Shelob attacking twice. Unexpected Courage and Spear would take two. Re yeah. Yeah. We lost both an Unexpected Courage and a Spear, though, from. Um, let's, let's play Brace. Heal two damage, and we're going to draw two cards. Gandalf, there we go. And another Gandalf. Let's go. Let's go. That's big. That's big. That's big. That's real big. That's real, real big. That's freaking awesome. Okay. Um, We'll discard Elven Light to get a resource. Let's go ahead and spend two, four, five to play Gandalf. Draw three cards, deal four damage to an enemy, or reduce your threat by five. I'm going to draw three cards. Fellowship of the Ring, Elven Light, another Gandalf. Excellent. Let's go ahead and spend two to play Fellowship of the Ring on Frodo. It's another non-ejective attachment. Um, Gandalf can block Shelob. 
Baragon can block Shelob. That's nice. Um, let's play Elven Light from the discard pile. I'm looking for a spear. Hasty Stroke is also very, very good. Okay. Okay. Gotta go. Good luck with the rest of the game. Have a good weekend. See ya. Alrighty. So Shelob's going to attack. We will block with Gandalf. No shadow effect. Excellent. We're showing eight. So let's go ahead and go four with Glorfindel. Four with Arwen. That's eight. That's how much we're showing. Uh, we are going to raise our th threats here. Uh, Frodo will quest for three. One, two, three. And I think we will go one, two, three, four, fourteen. I'm gonna flip into Peril Surge, place one resource on Shelob, or she makes an immediate attack against you. We'll place a resource, I guess. And then it surges into the spider's lair. Uh when it's explored, remove a resource, then becomes the active location. She makes an immediate attack. That's fine. So we're showing eleven. So we place enough to succeed once we kill Shelob. Number one priority now. We will block with Baragon on Shelob's attack. Attack destroys a character. Does not. We're good. And we're going to go three, four, five, six, which we'll remove there. Gandalf goes away. I'm kind of playing a little fast right now because I do have to go soon. We will draw into a Light of Valinor. We'll throw resources away. Or outs, I should say. We will go ahead and play a Gandalf. Two, four, five. We'll draw three cards. There it is. Spear, test, and a shield. All right. So we'll play this Spear the Citadel. Um, we'll go ahead and discard and play Elven Light to get a hasty stroke. We have more Elven, Elven Lights here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, now we're going to keep Pacey Strokes and Test of Wills. We're at 39th threat, so we should be fine. Um, we'll quest. Oh, we have so much. We still have to quest for a ton, unfortunately. So we'll quest for, actually, we'll make an attack with Shelob. And we will exhaust the ring bearer from here. Shelob's going to attack for four. She makes an additional attack against you after this one. We'll go ahead and hasty stroke that. Okay. We're showing four, eight, eleven. We'll go four, eight. Eleven. Fourteen. Flip into Surge. Either flips Meagle to Gollum. Gollum makes an immediate attack. Okay, so this will Surge into the Underway. While it is the staging area, each orc enemy gains minus five engagement costs and gains forced. After an enemy engages a player, deal it a shadow card. Okay. We'll go ahead and just travel there. I'm fine with that. Um... We will defend against an attack here. So it's going to be four. Destroys a character, does not. We do knock a resource off from the spear. And we will attack for three, four. Unfortunately, not enough. Dang it. Okay. Stand up. Draw into a shield. Increase our threat to 40. Okay. Gandalf goes away. 
pass out some money. We'll discard and play Elven Light to draw into a dagger. Ooh, I do like dagger here. Play a dagger there. Um, we'll go ahead and spend five resources to play Gandalf. This is our last trick. I think we will draw three cards. Stargazer, Council, and there's the Unexpected Courage. Let's go ahead and spin two to play Unexpected Courage. So we save Baragon there. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and quest. Actually, we will exhaust the Ring Bearer. Shelob's going to make an attack. We will defend with Baragon, which will knock a resource. Before... Uh, we're going to attach this to a hero we control. Um, we'll attach it to Frodo. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, no damage was dealt. That's good. So we will quest for four. Eight. Twelve. Fourteen. Fourteen. Elrond's Council. So go to fifteen and we'll reduce our threat by three. Attach to a hero you control and exhaust that hero. Counts as a, so we'll attach it to Arwen. Okay. So that was, what are we showing? We're showing 11 requested for 15. So this will clear. That's nice. Not going to travel there. Shelob is going to attack. We will block with Baragond, which will knock a resource that destroys a character. Does not. Gandalf goes away. Oh, wait. Actually, we're going to attack for three, uh, four, five, six, which will knock a resource. Sweet. Okay. Gandalf is gone. Do we care about Shelob's poison? We probably do. Let's stand up, increase our threat. Draw into a Galadrium's Greeting. Pass out some money. We're at 37 threat. Um, we'll discard Elven Light to get a resource. I don't think we need... Oh, wait. Hero's text box is blank. Um, let's go Power of Orthnak. To raise our threat by two, to get rid of the one on Arwen, then we will get the resource. Um, we'll go ahead and spend four to play uh, Northern Tracker. Shelob's going to make an attack. We will block with Baragond, which will remove the last resource. For attacking him, he gets plus one. So we're good. Okay. We're going to... We're showing... We're showing 11. Let's quest for four, eight... I would have I should have done this last round so she would have readied eight. Twelve. 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 Twelve.
12, 16. Yeah, let's go 16. I'm good with that. So that's 16. I'm going to flip into each player discards one random card from his hand and one non-objective attachment that I control. I'm good with that. It is Light of Valinor. I think, yeah, I still have one, so we'll discard the Light of Valinor. So, place a lot of progress, but we do not have to engage. We're going to go ahead and she's going to make an immediate attack when I travel here. No, we'll leave that. She will attack. We will defend with Baragon. It's going to be four. No shadow effect. One damage right there. First blood on Shelob. And we will attack for five, seven, eight. So that's going to be four damage. She's at six. So all we have to do is survive the two attacks and we'll be fine. We'll stand up. We should also get another knight here soon. Increase our threat to 40. And we will draw into a Stargazer. So I think one of these is a knight. So that's nice. Pass out money. We will discard Elven Light to get a money here on Arwen. We can use four to drop a Northern Tracker. This is actually still exhausted. Four on a northern tracker. I don't think I care if we engage there because because we'll make an we'll we'll shuffle these up, but we'll make an attack. We'll be able to deal a damage, and then we can attack. We can defend against Shelob first. And if we've engaged the wraiths, it doesn't matter. All right. Feel pretty good about that. Okay. So we're going to make an attack. We will defend with Baragon, dealing a damage, which will be the seventh damage there. And the shadow card, the attack destroys a character, does not. Uh, we will increase our threat. Uh, we will go for... F we just can't lose the threat. That's it. Uh, so, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're showing 11. So we should be fine with that. Flip into attached to a hero you control. We'll go Arwen there. So we will increase our threat by one. Because we quest for 10, we're showing that we still will not engage here. During the encounter phase, we will defend, dealing the last damage to Shelob, winning us the game. Nice! Excellent. We don't even get to see the shadow card, which would have been nothing. That was a fun quest. I, I did enjoy that quest. The the wraiths here are very, very scary. Um, those are those can be pretty brutal. Uh unfortunately I don't have time to unbox the sands. So we'll we'll do that at some point, potentially on well, probably on a just a different stream, but I do have to run so I can take my wife to the airport so she does not miss her flight. Uh, that'd be bad. But yeah, woohoo! Sorry, let's go. Excellent. Yep, sorry, sorry that was a little bit rushed there at the end. I apologize, but it was a it was a fun quest. It, it was definitely really interesting and felt very thematic with Shelob and everything. So because she's not she's not supposed to be easy to kill. So the last two cards were probably a Sam and a Knight. Do I only have one knight in here? I think I only had one knight. I'm crazy. GG Spidey, let's go. Take the Eagles instead of the airport. <laughs> nice. Nice. Excellent.
thank you all so very much for hanging out. Sorry to run. I think I will be streaming back on Monday pre Gen Con, but just make sure that you check the YouTube community page to see when that will be or if I will be able to do that. But I think I will. I think I'm going to play some champions on Monday pre Gen Con. Just join the stream, which I see is ending soon, but I'll go back and watch from Straps early. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. Gregory, I appreciate it. Nice. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. And until next time, we'll see you around. Peace.